Uh, hello everyone, my name is Dr. Fari Zaman and today I will present to you about signal propagation and path loss models. Okay. So first up, there's transmitter and receiver signal models. So what are these? So basically here we have the PT is the the transmitter and PR is the the receiver. The signal here is characterized by power, and in the transmitter power, it's constant, but not for the received power. When the re receiving side is steady, it receives better signal. And here we can see from the graph that the y-axis depends on the power received since the transmitted power is constant. The x-axis depends on the distance between transmitter and receiver as the distance increases the power received decreases exponentially. This is, rep this is represented in the blue line. From there, the red block represents an object that creates a nonlinear side scenario. The graph here, it shows a change of intensity of the power received as shown from the red, this, the red line we can see. And as we can see, um, when there are a lot of buildings, walls, or actually any obstacles, it will produce ripple effects. And this is due to distortions. And as for the blue line, it's the, it represents the path loss and the shadowing for red and the multipath fading for the green. Okay, so next up, so path loss modeling. Path loss modeling um, is comprised of a couple parts, Maxwell's equation, which uh, which involves the complex and impractical, and free space and two path models, which are, are too simple to be considered a real case, and ray tracing models. To, it requires site-specific information, single slope path loss exponent model, uh, good for high-level analysis, and me measurement-based and standard model. Uh, this one is not accurate and needs to assess different designs. Okay. Okay, so what we have here is called a free space or LOS model. And basically LOS means line of sight model. Uh, LOS describes uh, the propagation of signal without any obstruction to the receiver, such as curvature of the earth, buildings, and other obstacles. And generally, it's characterized by the power falls that is proportional to the inverse of the distance squared. And it is proportional to the lambda or the, wa the wavelength squared. And it is also inversely proportional to the frequency squared, which are caused by the effective aperture of the antenna. And another model would be the two-ray model, which it says that path loss for one LOS path and one ground, it they bounce on the ground. And these bounces um, cancel LOS path above critical distance. And it has some drawbacks, which, uh, which contains power polyps. And as we can see, it depends on the proportion of certain variables. But what we can conclude is that the power decreases significantly when the distance is greater than its threshold distance, which is actually very far away. Okay, so next up, we have general ray tracing. Um, the model um, signal components as particles. Uh, the, the signals can be refracted, uh, reflected, or scattered. And it requires side geometry and dielectric properties, which can be easier than Maxwell. And, and how, how we can calculate this, we use computer packages usually and simula simulation. And the use of general ray tracing uh, takes into account most of the problems addressed before. Uh, but uh, in general, ray, ray tracing, ref the reflection part is generally more dominating. Okay, so, and we also have the simplified path loss model and it's used when path loss dominated by reflection. And most important parameter is the path loss exponent, uh, epsilon, determined empirically, which you can see here from the equation. And it's basically a simplification 
first a simplified version of the pet loss model and here we have the dr or the receiver location the d the reference point of the receiver the pr the power received and the pt power transmitted okay so we have mm wave millimeter wave so what's the big deal so millimeter waves uh, are located in the high spectrum bandwidth as you can see here and from the image it starts from the top left which are the lowest frequency to the highest spectrum uh, in the us uh, for example in the united states the 5g is allocated in the 38 gigahertz spectrum and the millimeter wave starts from the 60 gigahertz to 100 gigahertz and because of this because of the higher frequency getting bandwidth is easier okay now what about the propagation the channel models itself are immature it's based on measurements few accurate and few accurate analytical models as for flat loss uh, it's proportional to the lambda squared which can be considered huge and the millimeter waves actually still needs more research since its channels are still immature and more research needs to be conducted for it to be accurate uh, which can be based on the measurements and the models itself okay that is all for me i just want to say that the mind is just like a muscle the more you exercise it the stronger it gets and the more it can expand by Ido Wu Koyenikan. thank you